When Volkswagen introduced the Tiguan back in 2009, the company said that the name was a mixture of tiger and iguana. Right, because the two animals have anything in common. Now, as Volkswagen's entry into the hugely competitive compact crossover segment, it offers the traditional strengths and weaknesses that buyers expect of a Volkswagen today. So let's take a look and see what those are. Now, as a brand, Volkswagen is looking to improve their sales. Like every other manufacturer, they want to become the largest automaker in the United States within the next seven years or so, they say. One of the vehicles that is attempting to help them is this vehicle. Back in 2009, Volkswagen saw a hole in their lineup. They noticed they were missing a small crossover SUV. Sales are very strong for that vehicle in this segment for the United States. So. They essentially took the Volkswagen Golf platform, which is a great place to start. It's one of Volkswagen's best sellers in other countries, not necessarily in the United States. They raised the vehicle up. They, of course, they wanted to rename it to the Tiguan. Their other SUV, the Touareg, also has a relatively funny sounding name as well. Now the Tiguan is actually in its first generation still. Um, the current model for 2013 is slightly updated from this one. It was updated for 2012. There are essentially four trim levels available on this Tiguan for 2010. There's the base S, the S. E, the Wolfsburg edition, and then the top of the line SEL. Uh, today there's no more Wolf, Wolfsburg edition, there's the S, SE, and SEL. Now in terms of the styling of this vehicle, it's also been updated for 2012, but this is the older one. It's very Volkswagen looking, I mean it's kind of got the grill from the MK5 Jettas and Golfs. Um, the headlights look pretty cool. There were HID headlights available on this car, that's only on the SEL models. What I have right here is an SE 4Motion, um, there's a 4Motion badge on the back that gives it away as all-wheel drive. This one also happens to have leather and the premium, um, or the leather and the power driver's seat with the memory seats. You can distinguish an SE from the 17-inch wheels that this one has. The S model has 16s and then the fog lights in the front. Those are basically the two main, you know, deciding factors between an S and an SE. Now looking at the interior of the Tiguan, it's very nice. Volkswagens are always known for, you know, upscale, high quality, well-built interiors, and this one's no exception. You know, being that this is a compact crossover SUV, it's got a really nice step in height. Um, you pretty much just have to just get in the vehicle. You don't have to duck your head, you don't have to jump up. Uh, here's the key for the vehicle. This is just, you know, Volkswagen standard key. It uses the older logo uh, as the newer Volkswagens have a chrome logo as opposed to that, that design. Uh, there is no push button start on this on this model. I believe the SEL offers it, but not this SE model. You can see the gauges look like they come right off of, you know, all of their other products. And this vehicle is equipped with Volkswagen's corporate uh, two liter turbo engine. You can see this one, has a really interesting dash design. The Tiguan still looks weird to me. I mean, you have these little teeny tiny vents. You got two, four, six, eight. There's eight vents on the dashboard in general. I kind of think this looks kind of funny. I really just think it should have just been like one big vent instead of these two separate ones, but it's unique. You can see this one has a aftermarket head unit. You know, at first I thought it was factory, but you know, if you put it in reverse, there's actually no backup camera. It tries to give you a backup camera, but it says no device, which you can't see in the camera. Um, now, this one does have navigation, and it almost looks like Volkswagen's factory nav, but it's actually TomTom, Tom, the nav system. Kind of nice. This screen is huge. I mean, if you look at Volkswagen's factory nav, which is only about a 5-inch screen, this looks like it's like an 8-inch or 7-inch screen. Anyways, on to the rest of the interior. The dash is all this soft-touch material, very high-quality grading. It is soft-touch up here as well. The entire dashboard at the top here is soft-touch. Really feels expensive. Down here it is hard plastic but the grading is pretty expensive feeling. Uh, the glove compartment is on the normal side. You do have an iPod uh, jack right there, but that's from the aftermarket nav system. The lid is damped, but it's not lined with felt. Uh, looking at the center stack right here, uh, you do have a six speed traditional automatic transmission with a sport mode. No paddle shifters, but a little shiftable gate here. Um, you can see there's an automatic uh, parking brake in this vehicle as well. Cup holders right here, they're somewhat on the small side. You do have an adjustable armrest with uh, some storage right here with an auxiliary and power outlet over there. Now coming to the door panels of the Tiguan, it is soft touch plastic, alloy door handle, silver painted plastic here. I was kind of expecting that to be real aluminum, but it's not. But it's all really high quality stuff here. You can see leather stitch right there where your elbows are gonna rest. Now the steering wheel in this vehicle is an older Volkswagen steering wheel. They've updated the Tiguan to 
to have the newer steering wheel from other vehicles. You can see here you have your steering wheel audio controls, your controls for your uh, trip computer over there. The steering wheel does tilt and telescope. Overall, you have a really nice commanding view of the road. Or not really commanding, but it's a nice view of the road, much better than a sedan. You can see this one has the optional panoramic sunroof, and you can see it's freaking huge. And you, the controls are pretty much just controlled over here. You have a little sunshade that comes out and will, you know, provide you some coverage from the intense sun, although it is kind of slow, and you can see just how huge the uh, sunroof is, just how long, just by how long this thing is taking to come over here and close. Now, looking at the back seat, uh, compact crossover SUVs are usually known for having roomy back seats. The Tiguan is okay. The CRV and the RAV and the Escape give you a little bit more space. But you can see here, step in is just as easy. You got vents back here, which is not what you'll find in other crossover SUVs. Uh, you also have dual map pockets. You'll have an armrest right here. Um, with some cup holders. I mean overall you can fit three across in here It is a little bit narrow in terms of the body and looking at the door panels here I'm sad to say that they didn't carry through it's hard plastic right here But it's a decent graining material and at least it's soft touch over here where your elbows are gonna rest So I guess I have to give them points for that now, looking at the cargo area of the Tiguan, this is the vehicle's main weakness, and it's probably what keeps the vehicle from, you know, becoming a bestseller in terms of, you know, sales in the class. You're only looking at about 17 cubic feet of space here with the seats up. Fold the seats down, you're looking at 56 cubic feet. That's roughly 10 to 20 cubic feet less than the competition. I mean, it's got a really nicely finished cargo area. The liftover is pretty easy, and it's still practical, but Jetta's, uh, Volkswagen's own Jetta Sport Wagon offers more space than this. You'll find an engine that a lot of other Volkswagens have. This is the company's corporate 2-liter turbocharged TSI four-cylinder engine. Uh, it does have direct fuel injection. Here are the numbers. 200 horsepower and uh, 207 for pounds of torque. It's either paired with a six-speed traditional automatic or there is a six-speed manual available, one of the few compact SUVs that offers it. Uh, and it's available with either front-wheel drive or Volkswagen's four-motion all-wheel drive. So I have the all-wheel drive model with the six-speed auto. Let's take a look at how that combination drives. So with so many choices on the market, how could you possibly decide? Well, let's take a look and see how the Tiguan at least stacks up against its more well-known competition. And of course, the 2-liter turbo engine kind of makes the exact same sound when it starts up. It's the typical Volkswagen starter noise. Now, the driving position of this vehicle, of course, is very nice. Uh, compact SUVs are always pretty much offer it. You have a really, you know, higher up seating position. You can see pretty much over the hood really well. The vehicle is also pretty short. In terms of overall length, it's about 173 inches long, which is actually smaller than a CRV. These pillars here are a little bit on the thick side though, uh, and don't expect to find any blind spot information available on this vehicle, not even on the 13 model. It's not available on the TIG one. Now, those of you who are thinking this car is kind of like a, an SUV version of a GTI, may be a little bit disappointed. I'll show you why. Now, even though this is actually the same two liter turbo four cylinder in the GTI, it's got a lot more weight to move around. This car weighs about 3,700 pounds, which is roughly about 600 pounds heavier than a GTI. And you feel it, the zero to 60 times in this car slow down to about eight and a half seconds, especially with the all wheel drive system kind of lugging it away. But overall, it's faster than a CRV, a Toyota RAV4, you know, the naturally aspirated competition. However, the V6 versions of the RAV will definitely out will outgun this thing. Even Ford's Escape Titanium with their 2-liter EcoBoost is quicker if you're going to compare, you know, a 13 model to what's available now. Now, the ride quality in this vehicle is actually surprisingly good. Um, it's pretty soft. This car, what's different about it is it's nothing like a four-door GTI, so don't even think that this is an SUV version of a GTI for those of you who are like looking to get more space versus their GTI because you need it. Uh, the suspension is kind of floaty. It's a little bit, it's a lot softer. And I mean, Volkswagen did that because they knew that the target audience for this vehicle prefers a softer ride. It's pretty quiet in here. The steering, while is pretty numb, but it is decently precise, but it's just doesn't inspire much confidence. The, the most fun to drive SUV in the class, probably for me right now, if a 13 model, is the new Escape. The new Escape Titanium is probably the most fun to drive. You can see accelerating normally in this vehicle is quite a different experience than even other Volkswagens that have this engine because 
this car has a conventional six-speed automatic. It's got a torque converter. It's not the, the six-speed direct shift gearbox that's in you know other products, which shifts much quicker. This car does have a little bit of a manual mode here. Uh, it's also got a sport mode. It doesn't have any paddle shifters on the wheel, but it does have a little gate here that you can just flick down. You can see the engine actually makes a pretty, a pretty pleasant sound when you're accelerating. And it has decent pull. I mean, that strong 207 foot pounds of torque is definitely showing for you uh, whenever the you get the revs up a little bit. I mean, there's just power everywhere in the rev band. That's pretty much the characteristic that defines the Volkswagen's TSI engine. And the seats in here are very comfortable. That's the one thing about this car. I love the seats. This is the real leather upholstery from Volkswagen. It feels expensive, high quality. I mean, I pretty much could drive this car on a long trip for hours and it wouldn't fatigue me at all. Um, in terms of the overall space, this vehicle does feel feel a lot more narrow than like even the Escape or CRV. There's just, it's a much smaller vehicle and it shows up in the fact that this car is not as roomy. I think it's one of the reasons why it doesn't sell as well in terms of, you know, the rest of its competition. Another factor that the Tiguan, you know, is, or that's bad for the Tiguan is the price. A fully loaded SEL model with all wheel drive stickers for 37,500 bucks. That's about the same money as Escape Titanium. The difference is, at least the Escape has rebates to kind of offset the cost. The Tiguan is still the most expensive compact crossover in the class. Now, 17-inch wheels are pretty small, so the turning radius is actually quite good. You can see the engine is just free revving, and it actually will rev past its red line when you give it the boot. It's not bad for the car. The transmission knows you know, not to kill the engine, but this car is still relatively quick, and uh, I'm actually quite impressed with the way it drives. It's a shame that you know it doesn't sell very well. I think if Volkswagen made the, the next generation a little bit roomier, lowered the price a little bit, they would have a winner on their hands. But anyways, if you guys are in the market for a Tiguan, uh, you know, don't cross it out if you guys are Volkswagen faithful. Check one out. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.